Our seventh tradition states that every AA group ought to be fully self-supporting, declining outside contributions. We will now pass the basket. This is a weekly step meeting. Our format is as follows. A speaker is asked to talk for 25 to 30 minutes on the step of that week, followed by discussion or questions until 7 p.m. You can find these weekly meetings on our YouTube page, the Conscious Contact Speaker Group at Doylestown. Don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe, and share. That brings us to the speaker portion of the meeting on this day of, I don't even know the date. November 6th, 2023, <laughs> in Doylestown, PA, at the Monday night 6 p.m. Stay Alive Literature and Step Group at St. Paul's Lutheran Church. Tonight's speaker is? Mike. Mike. <laughs> <laughs> and they will be sharing their experience on Step 6 and 7. Please help me welcome Mike. I'm Mike. I'm an alcoholic. I'm it's weird. I was wondering what step you were on when I was driving home from work. I was thinking about just what step it was on because it was three a few weeks ago. It's like you got to be on six and seven sooner or later. But um, um, my experience with the, with the steps um, when I first started coming around, I, I I got a sponsor. You know, I was I was finding that sponsor. Someone, my friend Ed would keep asking me if I found a sponsor yet when I was new coming around. And I was like, well, I was thinking about this guy or thinking about that guy. But Ed finally got, I'd see him at every meeting, you know, because we're going to the same meetings. I'm doing a 90 and 90, and we're going around these meetings. And Ed finally said, this is Steve, talk to Steve. Well, Steve and I are still friends today. Even though he's not my sponsor, he moved away. But I was just thinking how my journey through AA <clears throat> started. And Steve took me through like the first three steps, but not through the book, you know. He helped me with determining that I was an alcoholic. You know, we're powerless. I was powerless over alcoholic. We're alcohol, alcohol, and that my life was unmanageable. It was kind of hard to deny that. Um, but he kind. Of, I had another friend, Al, that I met in the rooms, and and Al kind of helped me with the second step. Came, came to, came to believe. You know, and and I don't know what all this was building up to. You know, I mean, but I I read this, read the steps and the meetings and stuff, and I. I wasn't really into the four step or any of that stuff. You know, the steps kind of kind of scared me. And for a long period of time, I seemed to dance around one, two, and three. And I didn't do a four step for a long period of time. And I think the only reason I didn't drink was because I had this friend Al, and Al would be and Al would go to dinner before a meeting, we'd go to the diner after the meeting, and we would talk. And Al knew everything that I ever did, thought, or desired, whatever. But I, I spilled it all to Al without writing it down. And I felt I was exempt from doing a four step because of that. Um, and then I would just dabble on a few steps as I would see people, I'd make amends and stuff like that. And I really didn't think I had a lot of shortcomings. I really thought I was, I was a pretty nice guy, you know, it, if it was just a drinking problem. But as time progressed in AA, I found that alcoholism comes in people, not bottles. There's more to just a drink. The drink was just a symptom of the disease. And I, I, looking back, I really shortchanged myself out of not doing a, a four-step earlier. Um, my friend Steve had moved on. He, he, he got divorced, and he wound up moving out of state. And uh, I had some odd, odd off and on sponsors here and there. But then I met this guy, Fred. I, I was actually working in New York, and I was chasing a dollar. And, and I was working in Manhattan for money, kids, college paying the bills, want to have nice stuff, all that stuff. And I wound up working six, six days a week, and on Sunday I was still working because I wasn't at home. It was always work, 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 and I hated it. I was just miserable. I'm making money, and, and, and we have things, but I'm absolutely miserable. I'm not making it to meetings. You know, I'm not doing the work that I, that I was taught to do early on. I got the guys that are going down the East River to shoot dice at lunch, and they're telling me to go down there. They're smoking pot. And then I got the guys that go to the bar for lunch every day telling me I, sh I should come with them for lunch one day, you know, because I need to calm down. And then the other stuff that was going on in the job. But it finally came to the point where something has to change here. And we had a little camper down at the shore, and we were I was going down there, and Mary Rose was going to be coming down later that night. I left work early. And when I was going past Atlantic City, um, I thought, I like, we'd play Texas Hold'em at, at break time at work. And I thought, maybe I'll stop by the casino, you know? And I don't really go to the casino at all, you know, ever. And I, the next thought was, you know, who would know? And when, I, when that went off in my head, it's like, who would know? Everybody's gonna know. 
because I'm going to wind up drinking. You know, I'm not going to meetings. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm in complete halt. Do you know what I mean? All those symptoms and stuff are there. And I get down there and, and I open up the camper and I, I go to dinner by myself and I'm sitting there and I'm lonely. And it reminded me when I was at the end of my drinking, when there was nobody around and, and, and just that, that, that just total loneliness. Nobody is here right now. And there was an eight o'clock meeting in Avalon and, and I went there and, and the guy came in and this, there was a speaker meeting that I would go to when I was down there. And, uh, he was a Vietnam vet, and I'm already judging him. You know, he just started speaking, and I'm already judging him. And by the end of the meeting, that man told my story. He kept me sober. He helped me stay sober another day. But anyway, after that, I met this guy, Fred. It's like, I need to get on my game. I quit my job. You know, anything that gets between, anything I put before my sobriety, I'm going to lose anyway. That's, that's just a fact. So I quit. I just quit my job, and, and I had a sponsor, Fred, at the time, that I was kind of dabbling around with. But Fred, Fred sat me down, and Fred took me through all the steps this time. He sat me down. I, I had like 17 years sober at this time. But uh, and it was kind of nice because I, I, never, I never did that. I really wasn't sponsoring people. It's like, how can you carry something that, you, you know, you're not doing yourself? You know, it, it, I feel like a hypocrite, you know? I remember there was a guy who chaired a, a, a step meeting on Sundays I'd go to, and they got to the fourth step, or no, he got to the 12th step, and he said, Mike, would you want to, you know, take 12 weeks and do the... The steps well i never went back because i never did a four step you know you know so i'm cheating myself you know i'm kind of walking this walk i'm doing this little dance you know between steps i'm doing pieces of steps but i'm i'm kind of more or less <laughs> like my friend tom would say it's like a rabbit in your yard he drops a little bit here and then he goes over there and drops a little bit there and that's kind of what i was doing i needed to get all my crap together in one place you know but when i sat down with fred and friend had me do a four step and stuff um I was honest, the same stuff. It was actually kind of easy to do because I already went through all this stuff with, with Alan. I found out that there was really nothing to be afraid of. You know, these, the things I was worried about and being judged and, and, and ridiculed by people, by, by the things I did or the things that happened to me, that it was just this fear that, that I let run riot in my life. And it was brought on early that, you know, face everything and recover after everything and run. And all that stuff that was in there was pretty mean. You know, we laugh about it. Al and I would laugh about it. We'd joke with each other about stuff, you know, that, that we did that was on our four steps. And, uh, but anyway, Fred took me through the steps and, and Fred would take me through the big book and he gave me this, this study edition of the big book. And I remember I, his, his direction was to read a page or two every day. If you read more, great. Just read a page or two every day. And I had it on my nightstand the one night and Fred would go, would take us, he, he did some step work at the house. He'd go through the, the big book and then he'd go through the step book and we, we'd sit down and I remember bringing this book, this book in, and it was all like, it was huge because it got wet. I was reading it, it was on my nightstand, and a thunderstorm came through, and it was soaked. Well, Fred was sharing at the meeting. He, he was going on to something. He goes, holding up his book, he says, you just don't throw this in the back of your truck. You know what I mean? It's like, I didn't, Fred. I didn't throw it in the back of my truck. It swelled up from sitting on my nightstand. I was doing what you told me to do. You know, I was kind of embarrassed by that, you know, thinking back. But um, by doing that four-step, I could actually see patterns in my life finally of why why I acted the way I did, what 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 was triggering me to to make the decisions I made, you know, I, I, like the fear thing. I'm running from stuff. I mean, I, I'm a, I'm a cancer is my astrological sign, and my wife tells me I like to bury bury myself in the sand. Just I'm invisible. It'll go away. You know, total avoidance. You know what I mean? Not facing facing the truth, but to find real growth, you know, I I have this problem that I don't have a solution to. A higher power is my only solution, which comes in step three, who helps me get me through through the fourth step. And I meet these fine people in AA that just want me to get better. You know, it's it's odd, but out there, nobody wants to hear this crap. You know, I could I could tell them the blues and all this stuff, and, and I would never say this stuff in a bar room. But by doing that fourth step, and then sitting down with somebody doing the fifth step, and knowing that I'm no different than anybody else. I'm no better, I'm no worse than anybody in this room. I'm not a bad person. I'm a sick person from disease of, disease of alcoholism. And these are, this is the path I need to take in order to break free from the, the, the grip of this disease. So after the fifth step, the sixth step, I, I sat down. In the big book, it's only six lines. It's one paragraph. You know, the sixth step is so simple. But I sat there and I, I just sat in quiet and, and just pondered what I had done. And it's like, this is, this is the direction I want to go in on, go, go continue on in my life. I mean, I don't really have a choice. Because the option to go back to drinking is just, it's just not a viable option. And even today, I would think of suicide before I would think of picking up a drink, you know, when, when things really hit the, hit the fan. Um, so I asked God, who I, who I found in the third step, to remove my shortcomings. 
and and I pray I still I still on a daily basis it's like the shortcomings still come up I mean at, at times they aren't as glaring as they used to be um, but they still crop up my old way of thinking and it depends on how many meetings I'm going to how active am I, am I in the program and that uh, that <laughs> that's a telltale sign there how many meetings am I going to and I see how I'm acting you know like I was in a meeting here son Saturday and Sunday I hated the world for whatever reason, everybody was wrong. Every, I mean, the lady at the checkout counter, the, the machine, machine's not reading the groceries quick enough, you know, just stuff like that. And it's like, how important is it? And she comes over, she talks to us, and it's like, you don't know how realize how nasty people are. And it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I do know how nasty people are because I can be nasty. And it's like, I have no right to project that onto you. You know, you're here doing a job. You know, I mean, you have no control over this, you know, but it's how I treat other people. My outlook towards other people, it, I'm not... Always, I'm always thinking about myself. Yeah, but but it's like, what can I do for somebody else? You know, trying try helping somebody else is what gets me out of myself. Um, but it's easier to fix somebody else than it is to look at myself. It seems at times. Um, but the look in the mirror wasn't too bad. So the shortcomings that I discovered, you know, the, the anger, the jealousy, the the, the manipulation, the, the lying. I mean, that just went on. It it it, it was just exhausting. So then I have uh, character defects as well, you know, and it's, it, the thing is, but I don't know how I could be doing six and seven well if, you know, I'm look, I can't honestly look at myself and see character defects if I'm not trusting in God and I didn't see some kind of outline of a habit that I continually live. Um, but that was kind of the road I had to follow then once I had the instructions of how my behaviors were to, to get rid of these shortcomings. I mean... I'm a selfish person. I'm still selfish. I mean, and, and it, it's hard for me to break that. It's like, well, what's in it for me? You know what I mean? And and I don't know. It's 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 kind of sickening that I'm still going down that road and still beating my head against that wall. But um, I don't know. It's 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 uh, I don't know to be to be alone. And still with God, I used to go on this retreat. Roy Dilley brought um, AA to York, Pennsylvania. And my friend Al and there were a gang of guys from Allentown used to go down to this all-male retreat every year in August. And I would be judging it. You know, it's like, well, what the hell do you do there? 100, 100 men, you know, what are you doing down in the woods? You know what I mean? At this school for the whole weekend. And I go down there and it's led by a retreat master. And the retreat master is usually like a Catholic priest in recovery or some type of spiritual minister. You know what I mean? It's outside of AA. It's not an AA sanctioned event. But there's meetings and stuff there and there's plenty of speakers and stuff. But there'd be quiet time every night. After the, the 9 o'clock meeting, it'd be a silent period till morning. And then they had a dingling. You'd go around with a bell to ring a bell. And that was to for silent period and then for everybody that could, they could start talking again. But to sit alone all night, I would stay up all night. I was so excited. I was like, I was just a kid, and I would I'd stay awake all night and just be quiet with God. And I'd be reading my 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 uh, big book, or I'd be reading my Bible. Is, is, is were the two books I usually take there, and just to just to listen to God, you know, just to be quiet. You know, what I mean, and not move. And I I don't know. There was a there was a certain just a peace that came along with that. You know, to do nothing and to know that I was okay. You know, that even all the problems out in the world, because that's that's how it would start, you know, but I don't know. I really, I really miss those days. Alan since passed away. He died sober, too, but um, which is great. But uh, it seems like the longer I've been around and now that we moved, it's like we have, <laughs> what I've been finding hard lately is just kind of getting attached to people again. You know what I mean? It's like we had this set group of friends that. You know, a lot of them moved. Some of them went back out over significant uh, sobriety, and because they wasn't delivering what I guess they thought it was going to deliver. Um, it just seems weird getting old in AA. I don't know. I don't know how to really deal with it, you know, because because of the change. I don't really deal with change well, you know. But um, I mean, I've been sober since you know February 11th, 1990. I've been coming around, and. Uh, this time, I, I said I'm going to do whatever these people say, and, and and I did. But, you know, once I had that, like I said, I had, I felt I was sober enough, you know what I mean? And I could start moving on with life and, and not working the rest of the steps. But the steps are the instructions on how I can live a better life to, to change the way I used to live and think. And 
if I'm not practicing those steps or taking somebody else through those steps and not work, working as a sponsor and with a sponsor, it's just a continual, it's just a continual circle of life in, in, in a sense. Um, I've had sponsees that I've tried taking through them. I, I've had a sponsee that did the same thing I did. He said, well, I did a four step with somebody else. It's like, sure you did. I know you did. <laughs> I know you did. So we left it at that, you know, and he's still sober today, but he, he moved out of the area too, you know, but I just feel I'm cheating myself by fear or, or I don't know what I'm afraid I'm going to run into. You know, my character defects weren't as glaring as, as, as I thought they would be. Um, maybe at the time when I was drinking, but um, I don't know. It, it's not as scary as a program as I thought, as a, as I thought it would be. Um, so six and seven. I don't know. I think that's all I got. So thanks. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. Well, I'm not going to ask you to limit your sharing. There's so little of people. <laughs> so. <laughs> Um, please keep your shares related to the step. If you feel like drinking or if you've had a drink today, please see me or speak to someone after the meeting. We ask that you please refrain from the use of profanity. We're in a church and on a spiritual journey. Thanks, and,